So here from Netflix, I've got another video for you guys today. Got this one. Oh look, it's fresh out of the box, right? Just went to Apple. We just got a MacBook, and it already has a problem, right? <laughs> no, no. This is just actually a mail in here that we have. Uh, the mail in actually a nice box. What was this one? This one looks to be pretty nice. I think it's the MacBook Pro. I think it's A twenty three thirty eight. So it's the first um, version of the MacBook Pro. I think it's M one version. If I'm not mistaken. And let's go ahead and see what's going on with it, right? Oh man, nice. Still kept the box. To the people out there who keep the boxes, no matter what type of technology or anything else going on, that definitely let me know that if you guys do that. Because I usually buy if I buy something, I usually do it like to keep the value. Especially if someone sees it after a while, they're like, yeah, they probably kept it pretty well, right? Have a little bit more faith in buying something. So if you're reselling it again, all right here. So let's see what we got. All right, so see what's going on. So we got this here. The outlook still looks very nice. And let's see what's going on. Ugh, let me get my USB-C tester here. Oh, I'm all tangled. Oh, what a mess. What a mess. So this one only has two ports, even though it's a pro model. Still has, only has two ports. And it doesn't have four ports. Like there's some that do have four. Right, let's just plug it in and see what we get. Oh, you see that? Oh, it reset there. So it was on, and then it just reset. Oh, it, it didn't even reset. It just turned off. Sometimes it will actually uh, do a reset for it. Let's try the other port. Same thing. Oh, yeah, it kind of just turns off, goes on, turns off, goes on. So that probably is saying, right, that it's not taking a charge, right? It's not powering on. Maybe something's resetting in there. Probably because, what, there's a problem, there's a short, right? And that's what it's doing. It's like, oh, nope, no more voltage, no more anything else. Get out of here, right? So let's go ahead and take a look. Really see, let's open it up, take a look at it, and see what's going on. Let's pop it up, and what do we see? Oh, no, not that. We want to zoom in. Okay. And I do see just by taking a quick look, we could see little areas of corrosion there. So it looks like that this was actually some water damage, right? We can see it's close to where the processor is there contained. Um, well, it's close to where the backlight circuit is over here in this area. It's a little bit of blue and green. It's easy to see that because it's usually blue and green, right? When it happens, when it corrodes and stuff. So um, you can see a little bit better even under the microscope, but we see some here. So there's lots of different areas that have been impacted there. And uh, obviously when we want to take it up too to see uh, the damage going to the microscope, really see what's going on. But um, yeah, so I think the best thing first, right? Let's just do that. Let's take it up and uh, take a look at it under the microscope. Just really see what's going on, see the areas that are impacted and see what we can do to fix it. Board. And we see a little bit of corrosion, some areas. All right, see a little bit there, right? Um, We'll go ahead and take a look. Always if you see liquid too, this is uh, a very obvious uh, area. We can actually see here. Um, you always take a look at the top cover to see your possible damage here, right? So there's a little bit of blue here. That's close to where the Wi-Fi chip is. So there's probably a little bit of damage near the Wi-Fi chip or corrosion. And since it's an open gap, um, it can, some, some liquid can go through here, right? And also, what, what else is an open gap? An uh, open gap is where the port yeah. opens up, right? Where you plug in, where you charge. So when this comes up here, we actually see that this is actually corroded as well. So uh, let's take a look on the microscope. We'll take a look at both of them. This one obviously needs to get replaced, and then we'll take a look to see the damage on the logic board. All right, so here's our ports here. And you can see they're damaged. You see a little rainbow color, right? Blue and purple and pink. Yeah. Do you see that? And sometimes the traces can get a little bit impacted there. We like to replace them anyway because it's, um, uh, it's, they're easily replaceable there too. And we don't want to have a problem with it anyway, especially if the traces get a little bit. And it's very easy to scrape the innards of here, um, the little trace lines, because uh, if you're a little bit aggressive with a charger or some people, if they're really aggressive, they're thinking it's not making a connection or it's not charging, they'll actually plug in a little bit. Um, they'll be a little more aggressive with the, with the plug. And that's really bad because if you do something like that, okay. what can happen is um, these, these lines, right? The USB-C is what? It's, it's a power line and a data line. So if one of these touches another, one of these could be a power line, one of these could be for data. And if one touches, then you're going to have a big problem, right, with it because it's maybe in the power line, you're going to send um, all that voltage to uh, where the data line is. And that's not good. And that's not allowed to have it. And it could, uh, it could give it a problem, right? But anything like this, you would see maybe this obviously been plugged in and attempted and stuff like that there. Um, 
But this obviously needs to get replaced. We can just replace it. Doesn't look to be too bad. We could probably do a little cleaning on that. But if there's a little bit of chip or a little bit of trace damage, we just want to make sure. Now, there's some other models where this is actually soldered there, and that would give a big problem. We have to do a repair on that. That's usually the time when we do repairs on those ones. But these are the M1s. A little bit different. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the board, and we see this corrosion on certain areas. This is close to the backlight area. Um, most likely, that's not a main power that will actually uh, prevent the laptop from turning on. Um, we see some just little minor stuff corrosion here. Uh, we could do basic cleanup jobs. Um, we'll take a look and see. Just a little bit, a little bit of corrosion there. Like nothing really around the components. Nothing. Um, Usually if it's a main power rail too, you'll see, especially if it's a very important one, usually if it's the main power rail, you'll see it more of a darker color, and that's usually more of a burn because there's more voltage going through there, so you'll probably see that more. Um, and that's usually what prevents a laptop from turning on, and something like that. But little stuff like here, these are just little droplets, little coatings here. Nothing is really impacting components here. So maybe just like a basic cleanup, or, oh, look at this one, even in the corner. Or just something, maybe an ultrasonic can't. Uh, not handle we're not too worried about that but you always want to scan it first before you do anything just to make sure of the damage there because if you put a damage board inside like an ultrasonic machine just automatically you can knock components especially if the solder looks very weak or if it's been really heavily impacted that could really do the damage there or uh, something else you want to do that so it's always good to do a scan and this really doesn't look too bad nothing looks too crazy so we'll just do a basic cleanup and then we'll do a replacement for the USB-C port and I think it should be good but Right before that, let's go ahead and check just the board view real quick. So let's go on a screen cap. We see this is a backlight area, so most likely this area gets impacted, right? Um, you can see this PVV out, LCD BKLT, and uh, the darker lines are usually the lines that do have a current. Otherwise, the gray ones up here are usually a ground. So if you see any burn or any damage, it's usually more on these lines. That usually means the current's going through, right? Otherwise, you would have a ground. Uh, we see it's a little bit around this area too, which is the backlight it sends out. And um, that's going to be maybe a little bit more crow than others. We can just double check the chip and make sure it's fine. But it doesn't look to be too bad just doing a quick little inspection on it there. So um, most likely if we power this thing on, maybe the backlight might flicker. It could give a problem if we power it on actually right now with it. Um, and let's go over. I think we saw a little bit of area, I think, near the Wi-Fi chip, right? But it, it really wasn't too bad. Um, there was a bit of a coating there on it, but nothing was really too crazy. This is close to where the USB-C ICs are um, as well, but it's not the main maybe G3 hotline that we're kind of looking at, and that would be the main power rail that would probably give a big problem. But again, there's not a whole lot of damage to the main board itself here. A lot of it's just very minor stuff, probably just what a cleanup can't really handle and just do a replacement. So we'll do a cleanup on it. We'll replace the, uh, the jack. If there's something interesting, we'll come back. But otherwise, it probably just would be a more simple, um, not super exciting type of repair. But let's see. We'll take a look. Okay, so we're just going to do a cleanup job here just to make sure everything's good. Make sure no, the solder is going to get knocked off while we put this in ultrasonic. So it's a little touch up here and there, and we'll make sure it's good. Okay, so we remove uh, this chip here because uh, we did see that one of the pads actually isn't making a really perfect connection. We just want to make sure there's no other problem with the board itself there. Um, so we're going to take out the chip, and we actually do see if you actually look on the little bit of the left side there in the middle, that middle one isn't actually perfect. Uh, it's not going to make a perfect contact with the pad um, on the board itself. So we're just going to do a little repair there on the chip itself, and we're going to uh, add some extra uh, solder to it. And then we're also going to do the same thing with the board, but at least the board looks to be pretty good because there's not a severe burn where we have to add like a jumper or something. So if that was the case, that would be a lot more work and we would have to follow the trail and see what we can do. We have videos on that um, as well, but this one looks to be a little bit more straight, straightforward. And especially whenever you, uh, whenever you remove a chip too, you want to make sure that the pads are going to be uh, good again. So we can just do a little cleanup here, add some extra uh, clean solder to it, and everything should be pretty good. Now we're going to go ahead and put back on the chip um, and then make sure the backlight does come on. We'll do a full test for it, clean it up, make sure there's nothing else wrong with the board, and then we'll go ahead and see if we can test it. But it looks to be pretty good so far because there was no severe damage there. Um, just a couple little replacement things there. Um, just a little cleanup and just a little bit of ultrasonic can hurt. So take a look. Pads look to be pretty good. Let's go ahead and test it out.
Get the backlight turning on. Looks good. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on fixing the A2338 with the liquid spill. If you did, please leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. We got lots of logic board repairs, data recoveries, lots of other cool, interesting things on our channel. If you're interested in checking that out, please go ahead and take a look. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.